going to teach us about his definition of beauty, the Oriental way. Hi, Dr. Jim. Hi, Cory. I know you specialize in a certain look for Oriental women and men. It's not just a Western look uh, on plastic surgery. What exactly is it? Well, to me, uh, different races, uh, different nations, different people. The, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. okay, so, uh, I would not say that uh, Asians are less beautiful or less handsome than Caucasians. Uh, but, in my experience, there is, because of globalization and, uh, and the media, you have um, uh, cable uh, uh, TVs mm -hmm. and you have uh, newspapers all over it's, it's it's the media so there is exposure to other cultures to mm -hmm. other faces to yes. other um, people so the beauty uh, sometimes like for example when you take a look on an Asian woman that even if her nose you must have an Asian nose Mm -hmm. so, uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily anymore. But why is it that you are such an expert on this? That it's not so obvious when, when you subtle and very appealing? How did you um, develop this kind of look? Uh, it's over uh, a period of time. Mm -hmm. There is evolution in my techniques. Mm -hmm. But I'm basically a conserv conservative surgeon. Mm -hmm. I love art. Uh, and I want what I do on a, on a patient, it should look natural. Mm -hmm. uh, foremost in my procedure, in my goals, is safety. Mm -hmm. Short term and long term. Uh, it's a mix of races that gives beauty. It's, it's uh, what we call a uh, variety. Mm -hmm. So that's how I approach uh, patients. But for me, I initially uh, talk to the patient, what, what she wants. And then I read them. Mm -hmm. I do the procedure. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the most often requested procedure? Uh, right now, uh, it's a post between um, rhinoplasty and eye bag surgery. Mm -hmm. But before, when I was uh, in my first 10 years of practice, it's rhinoplasty, it's uh, oriental mostly, or oriental rhinoplasty. Mm -hmm. But more and more patients now uh, want uh, eyelid surgeries. Eye bag surgery. Uh -huh, that's right. Or they want a lid. Yeah, they want a lid. Uh, eye lid surgery. Mm -hmm. Doc, um, I know that the, the latest technology now in rhinoplasty is you have a choice, right? Yes. What are those choices? Well, you have a choice. Uh, the most frequent still they want uh, silicone implant mm -hmm. because silicone implants give a natural look mm -hmm. and it is easy, it is biocompatible, it is uh, inert. So for as long as you know you know the principles, you won't get complications. Mm -hmm. And the other option is you get tissue from the patient, like you can get cartilage or bone, mm -hmm. uh, and you can get even uh, fat, uh, dermal fat graft to uh, increase, uh, for example, the dorsum of the nose. Mm -hmm. But uh, to me, uh, these are all easy. Augmenting the dorsum of the nose is the easiest part. Uh, the only difference is you are uh, you have to do it. It's more of the contour, not the uh, size that you put. Did you write this book? And I write this book. Mm -hmm. it, it means that you can do big surgeries from head to toe without putting the patient to sleep. That's fantastic. Yes, it's just like acupuncture. Mm -hmm. If you know where the sensory nerves are uh, and where to block them, you can have big procedures like, for example, hair transplant. I can block the whole scalp with uh, a few, um, let's say, 10 milliliters of uh, anesthetic solution. And the patient is awake. And the patient is awake, but there is no pain. That is great, though. And this is still using the uh, traditional way, but with um, modification. Yes, with some modifications. Mm -hmm. There's a button new book that's coming out. Okay, and you're writing a new book? Yes, I'm writing a new book. That is my fourth book. And the title is uh, this is my first book about uh, nose, uh, rhinoplasty. Now I have, um, I'm, I'm coming up with a fourth book, which is a lot better than this. 
Uh, it is No Sleep, a guide for aesthetic surgeons. The reason is I want to uh, uh, put out principles uh, uh, mainly uh, to have safety in doing these procedures. As you know, this is one of the most popular procedures now, most frequently done, and the complications are uh, increasing because there are some, because the practice is lucrative, uh, there are some shortcuts. For example, a, uh, a, uh, a doctor who is, who is working or practicing in another specialty decided to uh, observe mm -hmm. and then practice uh, cosmetic surgery like no sleep. Uh, but I can tell you that it, it is like you have to learn, uh, you have to study, you have to have a structured program, a guided program, and you have to have hands-on training, and it takes years before you uh, develop uh, to be a competent uh, surgeon, plastic surgeon. In short, only go to the best. Don't fall in the hands of quacks. Correct? Right? Right. There are many who pretend to be plastic surgeons, and they are not. So check the doctor's credentials before submitting yourself to any kind of surgery. Doc. Um, how many, candidly speaking, how many noses have you done? Uh, I would say thousands. 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 And in all of this time, in all this time, what have you learned about doing Asian faces? Okay, I told you that most important is safety. Mm. Uh, second, excellence of work. You have to have that passion for excellence. To me, excellence. Uh, as uh, you will see later, that uh, preparation, you know, it's uh, analysis, planning, is the critical part. Mm -hmm. The execution is fast. All right, now, if a patient insists on a nose and brings you the photograph of a movie star, will you do it or will you tell her something else is better for her? Okay, it's like this. I will be honest with you. Uh, if I see that I can do it, I will do it. But there is such a thing as the anatomy of the patient. Mm -hmm. If you have this patient and there is a risk that you can perforate the tip of the nose particularly, that mm -hmm. is the most frequent area where perforation occur, mm -hmm. then I will tell the patient there is a limit to what is safe. That's right. Because what you are going to put in, although it is inert and biocompatible, it is a non-living tissue and your nose is a living tissue so it is your nose which will give way it is not the implant see many people but the implant is forever it is forever okay <laughs> it will not die but our bodies are not <laughs> right. That's right so uh, you have to explain to the patient okay. thank you so much though you're welcome